So here we are at the beginning of Advent. You ready to lean toward the light? I know that I am. I was saying to myself, doing my mental gymnastics as I'm trying to figure out how to make it through this winter, is I was like, one month from today, the days will be getting longer. That is pretty good news for me. So as we think about our practice as Christians of um, celebrating Advent, is this time of expectation. And as our, we hear in the gospel today, it is about being alert and being awake. And that is kind of funny because a lot of my friends and I, and you know, I'm sure you might have th thought about it, is that we kind of wish we were bears and we could just hibernate and then wake up when spring was here. Doesn't that sound great? And yet the gospel calls us to something much different, to be awake, to be aware, to be alert, and to look and lean toward the light. I think that work this year may be harder than ever because just in a normal winter in New England, we tend to go in and kind of hibernate a little bit. I always realize that the kids in my neighborhood grow a foot during the winter and it's like, oh my gosh, I haven't seen them in so long. And so this isolation that we experience in the winter anyway, doubled with what we're dealing with COVID, is just a really challenging time. And so how can we be awake? What are the practices that can help us to be alert and to remember that we are leaning toward the light? I was talking with the Reading Between the Lines folks on Zoom on Wednesday, which is just a great group of people that are kind of wrestling with um, the gospel of the week or whatever reading we have that week. And one person said that the hardest thing about staying awake right now is that the practices that she loves that help keep her awake, and we're not talking about just from being asleep, but kind of awake in her faith, is that she is a person who loves to serve other people. And she can't do that in the way that she is used to doing it. And that really is a barrier for us. It's definitely a barrier for me, being a people person that I am preaching right now. I'm looking at a camera. I'm not seeing your faces. Now, I am in my mind's eye, and Ashley and Jen have definitely taught me how to do that in a better way than I used to. But it is so different and so hard when we can't serve one another in the way that we are used to, because I agree wholeheartedly that it is in our service of one another that keeps us awake. It keeps us um, aware of the light around us. I like to say that I am a minister by, um, by function, by title, all of those things. And it is amazing to me to think that when I go in to serve someone, when I go to minister, in however that is, I always kind of think I'm going to go help somebody. And it feels great. But what's amazing is I can tell you that I have never left a situation like that where I didn't get into my car or back to my office or now hang up the phone or close my computer and say, who was ministering to who? Because that's the gospel. It is one of the paradox of the gospel. It is in giving that we receive. It is in pardoning that we are pardoned. It is in dying that we find eternal life. It is this paradox of when we give, we are in that posture then to receive. And I think that is one of the biggest challenges right now is how do we practice this life of service that we're called to, especially this Advent, in a way that's meaningful when we can't do exactly what we're used to doing. So we were talking about it. And I've talked to a lot of people, but I want to share some of the practices that I have. Something that um, somebody asked me not that long ago, or told me not that long ago, is a friend of mine is a therapist, and she has started to ask her clients, what are you going to miss about this time? It kind of turns it all on its head doesn't it? Because this is Thanksgiving weekend and a lot of us are missing our traditions and missing family and missing this togetherness that we're so accustomed to. But by turning it around and going, what are we going to miss about this time that so cha changed everything? 
It's helped me to think about what are those practices. There's two things that I am going to miss about this time that I'll share with you. I'm going to miss how much time that I am alone. Now, you all know me, or you may know me, that I love people and love to be together, and it, it, it just I'm an extrovert extreme. But I do love being alone, and this time has forced me to be alone much more often. I have a new puppy dog. I go on lots of long walks with her. And that I think I'm going to miss. The other thing that I'm going to miss, which is a little more trivial, is I haven't set an alarm clock in about eight months. <laughs> the only day I used to have to set an alarm was Sunday morning, and I don't have to do that anymore. Now, I will miss not setting an alarm, but I won't miss being able to gather. But what are your practices that kind of help you to think about it in a new way, to lean toward the light that is always present, no matter what our circumstances. One of the things that we talked about on Wednesday was writing, you know, writing things down, writing a journal, writing for poetry. Um, I have been writing a lots of notes, and that has been such a gift to me because as I write these notes to people, no, I'm not with them but I think about them, I'm able to pray for them, and it connects me in a way that is different. Our daily reflections are another practice that have drawn us together in deep and meaningful ways where we have learned about each other on a whole new level. That is something that helps me to stay awake. So on this strangest of Thanksgiving weekends, as we begin Advent, I invite you to think about your practices. What will you miss during this time when this is all past? What are the practices that help you to stay awake? And I invite you to share them. Share them with others so that we might learn from each other. Be awake, stay alert, and lean toward the light. Amen.